Welcome now to Talk of the Nation. Thank you all for staying with NTV Weekend Edition. You're still with me, Sandra Twinovdio. Now, tonight, we want to get the perspective from a businessman. I mean, the most recent address by President Yoweri Museveni to reopen the entire economy in January. What does it mean to them? Now, majority of, this, of the public believe that December is the busiest for them. But now, waiting for January, what does it mean? We do have John Walgembe, who is the Executive Director for the Federation of Small and Medium enterprises who want to pick his thoughts on this address. A very good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good evening Sandra and thank you for having me here. Now evening. before we open this conversation I did mm. pose a question to you and I asked mm. what you think is the busiest month mm. for the businessmen and you mm. mentioned December. Correct. And we are seeing that the president promised with the hope of increased vaccination mm. the economy is going to fully open mm. in January. What does mm. it mean to you? Okay, so December definitely is the height uh, for business people for two reasons. One, that's when people spend the most. True. Ugandans are in the, the habit festivities. Yes, of spending in December, sometimes beyond their means. And then you have our friends from abroad coming in and splashing money around. So December tends to be a very good month for business people generally, particularly in the entertainment space, in the tourism space and so on. Now, my suspicion is that the president did not want to open up in December to allow more people to get vaccinated because his fear might have been that by opening up in December too early, it might kind of precipitate a third also. I'm just speculating. But if probably we had more vaccinations, the best month would have been maybe end of November so that people can reap some money during the festive season. Do you believe that this strategy is the right one to go for the entire economy, for the businesses? For example, we've had those that have been closed to date. Yes. If we are speaking about the bars, Correct. does it make sense for us to wait until January? Well, they say a, a, a bad in hand is better than two in the bush. Mm -hmm. Now the president has given us a firm date when the entire economy will be reopened. I think we can afford to wait. We spent two years waiting for this announcement. We can afford to hold on for a few more months. So mm -hmm. we can't start saying, oh, it's a wrong strategy and so on. Who knows what information he had? I think what we have to say is that whether good or bad, we are happy that the economy will be reopened. And we are assuming that also the curfew will be lifted because we, we very much want the night economy. Because the night economy is part of the whole mix in terms of driving consumption in this country. So if the economy is going to be opened fully, including the lifting of the curfew, including all these businesses that have been closed, then it's a positive thing that we want to welcome uh, wholeheartedly. We want to use this opportunity to pick your thoughts on yes. the economic stimulus that had been promised for yes. those sectors that had been mostly affected by the lockdown, by the COVID-19 lockdown. Yes. Have you received it? And uh, if not, this promise, this address, yes. did sort of tackle what you hoped would be addressed? No, the, the Ministry of Finance has actually released the $100 billion during. I think the PS announced this during his last address mm -hmm. when he was making the quarterly release. Eh? So the fact that government has released, remember it's $100 billion from the banks and $100 billion from government. Now, what is delaying is that the minister himself needs to announce the modalities for access. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why it's taking so long. Mm -hmm. So, in principle, there has been movement. But we are just about to get there. And I hope that the Minister of Finance can announce this soonest yeah. so that we move. Does it uh, worry you that if the, the, the situation stays the same, yes. you may not receive this money if we move into January once the economy is, is fully open? That, that is the point. The stimulus may be overtaken by events. Exactly. And that's why I said the other time that if you have a patient and the patient needs money for treatment, deliver the money when they are still sick. Other is when they are buried, the money may, may not be very useful. So for businesses that are struggling, now, we are urging the minister, please, now that the money is there and has been released, please announce the modalities so that the businesses can start to benefit. Because once the economy is reopened, the government's priorities may change. Yes. Small and medium enterprises, the Federation, what are your thoughts on the nightlife? Yes. Most people think the, for, for the economy to fully reopen and mm. operate and make as much as it used to do, yes. the, the nightlife needs to be prioritized and, of course, allowed to operate. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, well? the, the nightlife is a key driver of consumption. Look at it. All of us spend our 8 to 5 at work. When do we spend? 
after work. That's when you pass by the supermarket, that's when we go face to the cinema and so on. So if there's no nightlife, then when do people spend? We need people to spend. That's the only way this economy can recover. So the nightlife is critical. And it's possible to do that in a safe way. And I think that's what we need to emphasize. Vaccination, social distancing, putting on masks, so that uh, we don't have to either choose between our lives and having a functioning economy. As we anticipate for the full reopening again in January as yes. the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, yes. are there those underground strategies that you're putting in place to see that once we've reopened, we can, uh, the small, these businesses can carry on this, the, the worry that um, some of them may not really survive yes. to the end? You know, that's true. Some of the businesses are, uh, not will, but some are already closed, have closed shop. Some are struggling. And part of, you know, there's no bigger stimulus than opening the economy fully. No business person wants to depend on handouts. So to the extent that government has seen the wisdom of reopening the economy, we say thank you. But reopening the economy in itself is not enough. Let's continue intervening in strategic ways to support our SMEs. Speak to us in regards to that. How, what strategies, interventions? No, the legal really framework needs to be made easier people mm. to, for people to start and run businesses. Mm. Let's not have so many laws that discourage young people from starting businesses. Our taxation regime shouldn't be too punitive, particularly for startups and small businesses. Mm -hmm. It should be encouraging. If people are struggling, we shouldn't impose more and more taxes. And we should be more understanding when people are unable to mm -hmm. pay and fulfill the obligations. We also feel that the whole issue of the financing landscape, yes, the 200 billion is welcome, but the 200 billion is a drop in the ocean. What more can we do to unlock other forms of financing? Then there's the issue of access to markets, both local and international. And local here, I'm looking at government procurement. The issue of local content is critical. The president, unfortunately, did not sign the last bill, the local content bill then, into an act. Mm -hmm. We hope it can be prioritized along with the NSSF Act this time. So th these are all issues because it's an entire ecosystem that enables businesses to start and to thrive. And we are saying, please, reopening the economy is welcome and it's very good, but all those other issues must be addressed, including the cost of doing business is still very high. Now, I want to take you back to what the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Finance, Ramadan Gobi, had, is, is, has been captured on record saying that yes. until the nightlife is, has recovered, yes. all the other sectors are going to continue struggling. Correct. I want to take you back to that. Yes. Do you agree to that? I completely, I completely agree. And I'm saying if the President's commitment to fully reopen the economy includes a, opening the nightlife and removing a curfew. Because if you say the nightlife is reopened, but the curfew at 7 p.m. remains, it's as good as saying this, that won't happen. So we are saying if the president's promise includes that, then we are very, very happy. It's a good starting point. If it doesn't, then we might need to do a little bit of pushing to ensure that that becomes the case. Looking at January again, mm. Uh, mm. once the economy has hopefully been reopened, the mm. struggle for business, for mm. market, mm. as a federation, what do you have to to say in regards to that. So How do we navigate that? Because everyone will be rushing to get back into business, to you know, to get the same market. How do we navigate so that? So as a federation, we're helping businesses to re-strategize. And we've okay. been helping them to develop what we call business continuity plans. Don't assume that the business you left two years ago is the same business now. You need to appreciate and say, is my business able to continue as a going concern? And if it's not able, it's okay to exit. Don't insist, oh, my business has to work, my business of decoration has to If there are no weddings, there are no weddings. Mm. Do something else in the meantime. So what we are telling businesses is this has been a hard time on everyone. Don't blame yourself too much. If your business is not working out, please walk out with confidence and return to it at some later point when the fundamentals have changed. So we are working with not just ourselves, with other actors, both governmental and non-governmental, to support the recovery of businesses. As we conclude our conversation to, uh, tonight, I know for a fact you would like to encourage uh, the entire population to get vaccinated for yes. those that haven't gotten vaccinated. Yes. What are the things we should be focusing on before January? In the meantime, we have November, mm. we also have December. So first of all, as you've rightly mentioned, we must get vaccinated. Yes, this Conspiracy theories have been running around, but we must get real. Let's get vaccinated so that our economy gets back on its feet. Other economies are reopened now. Kenya is reopened, other countries are reopened, and the only way we can do that with confidence is through vaccination. So I want to urge the public out there, not just SMEs, all the entire public out there, please get 
the vaccine. It's available, please get it. And for the businesses to try as much as possible to re-strategize because for, things may not be the same. For the businesses, please re-strategize and don't rush to pick a loan if you don't need it mm. because it may do more harm than good. Make sure you bootstrap in this time. It's tough on everyone, but focus on the marketing. Your customer is the king in that business. So look out for them. Make sure they are happy. Because if money is not coming in, you don't have a business. Mm. Don't spend time, government stimulus, government... If you don't have a client, government stimulus is not going to help you. Mm. So please, focus on your client and make sure your business keeps right. And focus on your employees. Very important. Keep them, motivate them, make sure they are with you. All right, thank you so much, John Wangende, the Executive Director of Federation for Small and Medium Enterprises, speaking to us on the recent address by President Yoedim Seveni. Thank you as well for joining us. We'll take a short break, and MTV Weekend Edition will return shortly.